What's going on guys? Multiverse Corrupt here and today we are having a look at the Dark Knight's Metal McFarlane Wave. Born from the nightmares of the multiverse, the Batman Who Laughs is a hybrid version of the Batman and the Joker from Earth-22. This twisted version of Batman was created when nanotoxins from the Joker's heart were released into Bruce Wayne's bloodstream causing the Dark Knight's perfect mind to merge with a warped psyche of the Clown Prince of Crime. He soon became part of an attempt to plunge the entire multiverse into ultra-violence, chaos, and utter darkness. After being initially defeated, the Batman who laughed merged to survive and remain a threat to the greatest heroes of the multiverse. With the defeat of his twisted Dark Knights, the Batman Who Laughs sought to create a new team by infecting six heroes with the same strain of the Joker's venom that transformed him. Among those chosen for his evil army was Billy Batson, the wielder of the power of Shazam. After infection, Shazam donned the name King Shazam and was tasked with infecting Superman and bringing him to their side. Sent to Earth from the dying planet of Krypton as a baby, Kal-El was found by farmers Martha and Jonathan Kidd and raised as their son. As Clark grew up, the radiation from Earth's yellow sun gave him extraordinary powers, which he has kept hidden. Now fully grown, he uses his powers to protect his adoptive world as Superman. The Man of Steel is virtually invulnerable and has the powers of super strength, super speed, and flight. He also has enhanced senses including heat vision, x-ray vision, super hearing, and super breath. In order to infiltrate the Batman Who Laughs crew, Superman infects himself with the supervillain's deadly nanotoxin and goes undercover as one of the infected. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's Metal, the Earth is enveloped by the dark multiverse and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. Willing to sacrifice his own humanity for the greater good, Batman wields an evil Black Lantern power ring, which grants him the power to resurrect the dead. Now leading an army of zombies and riding a motorcycle made of bones, the Dark Knight wages war against the Batman who laughs and his omnipotent goddess Pupetra, in his mission to save the DC multiverse. As a child, Bruce Wayne watched as his parents were brutally killed in Gotham City's crime alley. Traumatized by their death, he devotes his life to becoming the world's greatest weapon against crime, the Batman. To become the ultimate vigilante, the Dark Knight disciplines his mind and body to reach the pinnacle of mental and physical superiority. He's a master detective and an expert martial artist, but his greatest weapon is his mind. Batman has a plan for every occasion, as well as high-tech weapons, gadgets, and vehicles to assist him in his relentless pursuit of justice. Bruce Wayne of Earth-11 harbored a deep hatred for the Atlanteans for their role in the death of her beloved Sylvester Kyle. In a quest to avenge Kyle, she spliced her DNA with that of an Atlantean, becoming a super-powered Dark Knight called the Drowned, capable of breathing and fighting underwater. Hailing from Earth-44 and the Dark Multiverse, this Dark Knight was born when an all-powerful AI program designed by Cyborg began to misinterpret its coding to homicidal ends. A cybernetic nightmare, the murder machine is a metallic mangling of the technological power of Cyborg and the tactical brilliance of Batman, formed by ever-changing nanobots. Hailing from Earth-22, this is one of three young boys who were infected by the absolutely nightmarish Batman who laughs to become his own brand of Twisted Robins. Kept on a chain-link leash, this sinister sidekick follows the evil Dark Knight bidding, fighting tooth and claw alongside the other Robins to take down any enemy. 
From Earth negative 52, here comes the fastest and deadliest man in the dark multiverse, Red Death. A menacing mashup of Batman and the Flash, this Dark Knight came to be when a once noble Cape Crusader stole the Speed Force from the Flash, hoping to, pre to prevent past tragedies. Clad in red metal armor, this sinister speedster moves like a literal bat out of hell. In DC's dark multiverse, on Earth-32, the green light of Will has twisted an angry Bruce Wayne into something very dark and sinister. After the murder of his parents in crime, Ali young Bruce is gifted with a Green Lantern ring, which allows him to fly and to generate deadly hard light energy constructs. With no Alfred Pennyworth to guide him, he soon swallows his fear and pain and lets the void that remains corrupt him and the ring, unleashing a wave of darkness across the world and now ours as the Dawnbreaker. Dick Grayson began his crime fighting career as the original Robin, Batman's protege and crime fighting partner. An expert acrobat and skilled fighter, Dick eventually left the nest and ventured out on his own as a new hero called Nightwing. His childhood experiences as a circus acrobat and trapeze artist make him extremely agile. He is a superior fighter and a high-skilled martial artist who has been personally trained by Batman. Nightwing is a keen detective, a natural leader, a strategist with advanced knowledge of a variety of technologies. And as for the Batman who laughs, this is what he comes with. He comes with obviously the trading card, a beautiful picture of the comic right here. And here is the back read up if you want to pause the screen and read it right there. And he also comes with the base and he comes with these two butcher knives or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the butcher knife. That doesn't really do anything. They are soft plastic. They just plug right into his hands very nicely. It doesn't have to be heated up or worked or anything like that. Here, guys, is the accessories for the Batman Who Laughs that comes with wings. So the Batman Who Laughs, the Sky Tyrant. Beautiful graphic photo on the front of how he just ripped the wings off of Hawkman and applied them to himself and then you flip to the back pause it and read it right there you go and the accessories that he came with were the flight stand and he also comes with these two beautifully sculpted wings a lovely dark gray for the figure he is a very evil character and it, it just suits him for him being technically the dark knight the wings are posable and they just plug right into his back right into these little holes right here let's go ahead and see king shazam's accessory and right here guys we do have the accessories for king shazam i was actually a little disappointed that this is all he came with was just the interchangeable hands with no lightning effects this is a big tease if i've ever seen one but we do have a beautiful product shot of this figure of king shazam down there at the bottom right here on the back billy batson is the real name and you can go ahead and read the rest of it so as for this figure, like I said, he only comes with the stand and the interchangeable hands. He does come with two fisted hands and he has these like grabby, slightly pointed hands. But I still love this figure. I just really wish there was more accessories that came with it. Here guys, we have the accessories for the infected Superman. Right here is another beautiful shot of the comic image of this Superman with his violent joker smile there and right here on the back is the read up if you want to pause the screen and read it right there and as for his accessories he only comes with interchangeable hands with two fisted hands and some grabbing hands and this one is more of a crooked pointing finger hand right here guys we have the batman fights death metal right here is a beautiful menacing comic photo of batman with his bat cycle that is made out of bones and various motorcycle parts i unfortunately do not have this motorcycle but i really hope to get my hands on it soon as soon as i can find it and right here on the back is the rita and as for accessories all he comes with is this sigh and i think it is absolutely beautiful i love how this has 
obviously some half of a bat wing design going on kind of at least that's what i see is kind of a wing to a bat obviously and this beautifully sculpted detailed handle that goes all the way down all the way down to the bottom right here so a plus in my book for the mcfarlane guys with this one i would be a little careful mine is very sharp so i would watch out right here guys is the other batman from dark knight's metal and i think this is just another fantastic comic image right here of a menacing batman with his dual axes and you can go ahead and read the back and for his accessories all he comes with is these dual axes but both of them are different sculpts and designs and i'm really glad that they really glad that they gave him two different ones instead of just giving him two of the exact same axes i do love this and if you put them together they kind of almost make a bat it kind of looks like so really a big fan of that there guys we have the accessories for the drowned or batman of earth negative 11 and right here is a fantastic comic image of her and all of her glory underwater, possibly taking on the Atlanteans. And right here is the back read up. As for her accessories, she only comes with this trident, which also has kind of a bat logo in here as well. Typical being Batman. No matter what universe he's from, all of his gadgets have to resemble kind of a bat. It is sculpted down here at the bottom as well, a little bit of a twisted metal, but in the middle, nothing really going on. It is a soft pla or excuse me, this one. It is a harder plastic, so I would not recommend bending it or trying to make it contort in any way, unless you want to run the risk of snapping it in half. So I, in my video, will not test how far this goes. I will leave this straight as it is. But I do think this is a beautiful trident. Here, guys, we have the Murder Machines accessories or Batman of Earth Native 44. Right here is the comic image on the front of the card. And then on the back is the read up. And as for his accessories, he does come with one open hand, kind of Iron Man repulsor blast, it looks like. And then he has his nanotechnology stretching out to grab onto, I'm assuming, Batman. And right here, guys, is Robin of Earth Negative 22. All he comes with is the McFarlane display stand and the trading card here. That is all this Robin comes with. And right here is the back read up. Same with this Red Death, guys. Now, this Red Death did come. He came in a two pack with him fighting the Flash and came with a long plastic, like sandbar esque looking but i have no idea where that is i am going to be honest with you guys so for me all i have for him is this stand here and his beautiful silver coated holographic trading card here batman earth negative 52 it is a little scratched it looks like i'm not really sure what happened there i keep them all in a little baggy but on the back here is the read up and as for the Green Lantern Batman, Batman of Earth, negative 32. This right here is the comic image that comes with him on his trading card. I think it is absolutely stunning. And back here is the read-up. And as for his accessories, all he comes with is the display base. And then he comes with this right here. It is a see-through green bat this is actually pretty detailed i know we have seen this before if you guys saw my last video with the green lantern and batman of earth negative 32 two pack link to that video will be in the description below and last but not least guys here is nightwing from the death of the family storyline this one is his accessories now so here is his trading card, beautiful comic image right here on the front as always. And then on the back is his read up right there. And as for his accessories, he does come with his two escrima sticks. And this is, this is all they are. Just two little black rods, a little bit of detail sculpted right there at the top for I'm assuming where the electricity is supposed to come out, not where his hands goes, because if it does it like this, 
it's just boring. It's there's there's nothing there. So this is how I have him hold his scrimmage sticks. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into this scale and articulation. I'll just let you guys know there will not be a size comparison inside this video, considering I'm doing all of 11 figures. It's going to be long enough without the size comparison. So how tall this figure stands all the way up to the and just about seven and a quarter for you guys. And I do think this is a well articulated figure. Let's go ahead and bring him closer to the camera. That menacing grin on. And he, does a, he is a little dusty. He's been sitting on my shelf for a while. But as for his articulation, his head can tilt about that far. He can look down about that far. His arm goes all the way out to about 90 degrees. And his arm goes forward but does not go all the way around. It can, but you would have to strain this part of the figure. So without doing that, his arm goes forward about that far. And it goes back a lot farther. He does have a bicep swivel, double hinged elbows and a hinge and swivel at the wrist as for his torso there kind of is an ab crunch but it is blocked by this plastic waist that they gave him on this one so he does not really consider to have an ab crunch considering he does not go anywhere a waist swivel he does have indeed it rotates all the way around he kicks out about that far right there and he kicks back not as far due to the plastic cape trench coat straight jacket type deal. He does have a double hinge knee. Once again, almost got it stuck. And he does also have ankle articulation. Ankle goes down, ankle goes up, toes articulate up, and he does have that beautiful ankle pivot as well. And as for this Batman who laughs, guys, this one stands because it is the same body sculpt. This one also stands at just about seven and a quarter. Still the exact same figure. Although I will point out that his trench coat is just a little bit different. And obviously he has wings. As for how long his wingspan is, if I can get him to stand up for this part, I have tried and tried multiple times without success. So let's see if I can get him now. There we are. All right, let's see that wing span from wing to wing. He is just about 16 inches wide with that wing span. That is a pretty good wing span for a seven inch figure. And like I said about his trench coat, his trench coat is more detailed inside this one. It's really got the, it's got some ruffles on the pads. He has the Hawkeye harness on. And as for his articulation, obviously we have seen the wings. The wings go up, they go out. They can go all the way up if you want them to. But that kind of cuts them out of the frame, so we will not do that. As for his head, his head looks up about that far. His head looks down about that far. His arm does go all the way out, and it goes forward, and it goes back. Same as the last one. I would not recommend rotating it all the way around. He also has a bicep swivel and double hinged at the elbows. His hand and wrist is on a wrist hinge and peg. And same thing with the ab crunch on this one. There is really nothing there, but his legs do go out about that far. His legs go back just a little bit farther with this one, considering this plastic is a little more has a little more give in it than the other trench coat does. He is on a double hinged knee. I'm gonna lift that out of the way. On the angle, they articulate up at the angle. He has toe articulation and he also has ankle pivot as well. And here guys, we have King Shazam himself. Quick little shout out to my buddy Chance who is back in my hometown. He actually purchased this figure for me and was like, hey, since you're reviewing figures, why not review this one as well? I thought this one looked pretty cool. And hey, I'm right there with him. I think this figure is absolutely beautiful. As for his size though, this Shazam stands at about 7 inches tall. Just right there at the 7 inch mark. Into the articulation, something I do not like about this figure. Something that really, really bothers me. Although it shouldn't bother me at all. It's a simple mistake, but... 
This Shazam, as you can see, has two, count them, two left feet. I'm not sure how that got messed up in production, but I understand they do a lot of these. I always thought it was kind of funny. But as for the Shazam's articulation, his head looks up about that far, but there is that little gap in there with his hood, and he looks down about that far as well. Not really much, actually, now that I'm looking at it. As for his arm articulation, his arm does go out about that far, and this one does rotate all the way around. Off. He does come with a bicep swivel as well, although this one's kind of stuck. Let's see what we got on this side. This side's a little bit better. He does have double... Double hinged at the elbow, but the shoulder pad does block it, and he is on a wrist hinge and peg and rotates all the way around. This one does come with an ab crunch, but it is just like the other McFarlane toys, where it's more like an ab side to side going on here. His waist does articulate all the way around. His leg kicks forward about that far. His legs kick back about that far. He is on a double hinge knees, and he is feet do articulate down and up and toe articulation even when it's a second left foot and he does have that beautiful ankle pivot still very let down to this figure also did not come with any electrical effects it's like it's his power or something it's crazy but i will not complain too much about that and here guys we do have the man of steel himself the infected superman in a nice purple suit as opposed to the blue suit i don't know if that has something to do with the joker toxin that got inside of him but we'll get into that later how tall this superman stands is at about the seven inch mark so the classic mcfarlane height i am a sucker for the seven inch figures as for this superman's articulation a uh, little quick side note i do love that this superman came with a tattered cape you do not see that very often with the mcfarlane figures if they're a bad guy he normally just gives them the normal flowing cape but i'm glad that he did this with his more back with his first wave but as of late they've all just been coming with regular figures i really am a fan of it so as for his articulation, his head does look up about that far. He looks down about that far. And if you could tell, see how loose his head is? I actually got a bum one. His head just falls right off. Arms do come up about that far and they rotate all the way around with a butterfly joint inside his shoulder. He does have a double hinged elbow and his hands are on a wrist swivel and peg. He does have the ab crunch, and this one actually goes all around. So you can actually get that ab crunch in, get it back, get it side to side. His waist is also rotates all the way around. His foot or leg kicks out about that far. His foot kicks back about that far, which is not far at all. He is on a double hinge knees, although he's got some juicy thighs and calves, so it will not go back as far as either. And his ankle pivots down, his ankle pivots up, his toes are articulate up as well and he does have ankle pivot side to side as for batman right here guys he does stand at about the seven and a quarter looking at seven and a quarter right here i do actually personally i think in this death metal universe this is my favorite batman design i love the the arch the bat in the middle i really do love the bigger bats as for his articulation, this figure does look up about that far. He looks down about that far. He does rotate all the way around. His arm goes out about this far, but it is hindered by the trench coat. I actually took this off a long time ago to see if that would help, see what I could do about here, but there wasn't really much I could do. So his arm is just kind of stuck right there going out about that far. He does have a double hinged elbow, and he is on a wrist hinge and peg. He does have an ab crunch, but it is the typical side-to-side -side motion. He does have a waist swivel, but mine is a little tight due to all the skulls that he has on his utility belt. So, down here at his legs, his legs kick out about that far, and they kick back about that far. McFarlane crotch gap right there. And he does have double hinge knees, although his thighs and calf do meet, so it is more like a single hinge, if you ask me. His ankles do articulate down, they articulate up, his toes articulate up, although, can I get it, can I get it, let's see, there we go. His toes articulate up, and he does also have the beautiful ankle pivot as well. 
As for this figure right here with this Batman, this Batman does also stand at about the seven and a half mark all the way up to the tip top of his ears. These ears are a little bit longer than the last one. Still a fan of it, although I will say this one's probably my least favorite out of this wave because of his articulation alone. Because all you have is that much up, that much down, although down's not that bad. But there's no really like head swivel. It's a neck swivel, and I'm not a big fan of that at all. I'm also not a big fan of the capes being formed like it's constantly blowing. I understand. When I think of Batman, he's always brooding on a rooftop and or gargoyle. But I would like to have some play with the cape instead of it being constantly stuck out here. His arms do articulate out about that far. He does have a bicep swivel. He is double hinged at his elbows and his wrists are also on a hinge and peg, but the hinge is hindered by how far his gauntlets come down. This one is also on a fairly decent ab crunch as well as just like the Superman goes all the way around, goes all the way back and side to side. His waist does go all the way around as well. His foot kicks out about that far and it kicks back about that far. Not really much of a gap right there. He does have double hinge knees and ankle pivot going down. Ankle articulates up, but not much because he is cut off by the top of his boot right here. Toe articulation and the beautiful ankle pivot. And right here, guys, we have the Drowned, also known as Batman of Earth, negative 11. And she stands just about the 7-inch mark. He did make her a little bit smaller than the male figures, which really do enjoy it. As for the drown here, one of my big gripes is her heels. Now, now I am not a shoe connoisseur, but this figure without the stand cannot really stand up at all. But as for her articulation, her head does not really go up at all due to her long flowing lock. She does look down. But her arms do articulate all the way out right there. She does have a bicep swivel and double hinged at the elbow. Her hands are also on a hinge and peg. As for an ab crunch, she does not really have one either. And also not really going on for her waist as well. She has one, but it doesn't really do much. Double hinged at the knees, just like most of them are and her heels do articulate down they articulate up she does have toe articulation but it kind of cuts her foot completely off and she does have ankle pivot as well and here guys we have the murder machine also cyborg batman or batman of earth negative 44 as for this figure how tall he stands he stands at about the seven and a quarter mark just like the rest of them and as for his articulation, his head does articulate up about that far. His head articulates down all the way. Due to his shoulder pads, his arms come up here, but I would not suggest rotating them because they do go all the way around, but as you can see, it will warp over time. He does have a beautiful bicep swivel and double-hinged elbows, and he also has his wrist hinge and peg. He does have an ab crunch, but it doesn't really do much but swivel all the way around. Nothing going forward, nothing really going back, and nothing really going side to side. He does have the waist swivel. This is one of the figures that suffer dearly due to the McFarlane diaper. This thing is massive. This is, this is Pampers if I've ever seen it. His leg does go forward about that far. His legs go back about that far. Crotch gap going on right there. And he has double hinged knees. He also has ankle articulation that goes down. It goes up. He's got toe articulation. And he has beautiful ankle pivot. And here, guys, we have Robin from Earth negative 22. That's how tall he is. Is he stands at about the six inches. But as for his articulation, his head does go up about that far. He goes down about that far. He looks left, he looks right, he looks all the way around. His arms go all the way up. His arms rotate all the way around, but there is no butterfly joint in there. He does have a single hinged elbow and a bicep swivel. And as for his hand, it is on a wrist peg, but I don't really feel much of a hinge in there. As for his waist, there is no 
ab crunch, no swivel, nothing going on here, except he does have a waist swivel, but mine is extremely tight, so I'm not going to force it. He is also have a single hinged knee that kind of acts like a double hinge. He just can't get all the way up there to touch his buttocks with his calf. He does have a ankle pivot that goes kind of down, but goes all the way up. Toe articulation and a slight ankle pivot. And here, guys, we have the Red Death, or Batman of Earth, negative 52. He stands at about the 7-inch mark, all the way to the tip of the ear. And as for his articulation, this Red Death figure, he looks up pretty much not at all. Like, it's non-existent, but he looks down all the way. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. He looks all the way around 360. His arm does go all the way around, and he has a slight butterfly joint in there as well. His arm goes all the way out. He does have double hinged elbows and a wrist hinge and peg going on for him. His ab crunch is pretty much the same as the rest of them, but he kind of goes forward, but he goes all the way back, and he really does get some good side-to-side -side motion in there. As for his waist, he rotates. His legs do go out about that far. His legs go back about that far. Crotch gap right there. He does have double hinged knees, and his ankles do articulate down, articulate up. He does have toe articulation, and he does have the beautiful ankle pivot. Guys, we have the Dawn Breaker or Batman from Earth Negative 32. And this one we're not going to spend too much time on because if you saw my last video, link to that one will be down in the description. We've already covered him before with the Hal Jordan. Batman stands just like we've seen before at about the seven and a quarter mark. And as for his articulation, it is the same as before. He looks up slightly, he looks down all the way, but he does not look so much side to side due to the wire sticking out of his head. And this is not the same one that I broke in my last video when I had two of them. His arms do articulate all the way around. He does have a bicep swivel and double hinged elbows. He does also have the hinge and peg for his wrist. I'm rotating his bicep as I rotate his wrist. Nothing really going on for his ab crunch, it's just kind of there. And he does rotate at the waist as well. As for his legs, he kicks out about that far and he kicks back about that far. Crotch gap there. He does have a double hinged knee. And as for his ankles, they do articulate down, they articulate up. He has toe articulation and the beautiful ankle pivot. Here, guys, we have the Joker Nightwing, or as I like to call him, the Nightwing who laughs, because I do have him post up with these guys. Yes, just a reminder, I do know this is not a part of the same universe. But as for how tall this figure stands, this one stands at about 7 inches tall. And as for his articulation, this Nightwing, there he does look up about that far. He looks down about that far. And I'm my personal favorite. I love making him have the creepy sideways head tilt. Nightmare fuel within its own. I'm not really feeling up in a butterfly joint in there, but his arms do rotate all the way around. He does have a bicep swivel and double hinged elbows. He does have the peg and hinge in his wrist. And his ab crunch does absolutely nothing, pretty much. He does do the side to side, though. He does rotate all the way around. Another figure that suffers from the massive McFarlane diaper. As for his legs, he does kick out about that far, kicks back about that far. Not really much of a crotch grab going on there. But he is an acrobat, so he can kick out about that far as well. He does have double hinged knees, and he does also have the beautiful ankle hinge down, ankle hinge up, toe articulation, and the beautiful ankle pivot. Although mine is stuck. Why are you stuck? There it goes. All right, guys, and here we have made it to the end of the video. I know this one was a little bit longer, but we had an abundance of figures to go through. And you so as for my review with each of these figures, for the Batman Who Laughs, he is going to be a 7 out of 10. As for the Batman Who Laughs with the Wings, he is going to be an 8 out of 10. As for my King Shazam, due to his, his feet being two left feet and lack of accessories and just no lightning effects, why would you make a Shazam bad one or a good one with no lightning effects? That one's going to be my 6 out of 10. 
My Infected Superman, that one is going to be a 7 out of 10. As for the Batman with the Black Lantern ring, this one right here, he's going to be my 8.5 out of 10. As for the other Batman, he is going to be my 6 out of 10. As for the Drowned, she is going to be my 5 out of 10. As for the Murder Machine, he's going to be 4 out of 10. As for the Robin, he is going to be 4 out of 10. As for my Red Death, just out of the pure beauty alone, he's going to be my 8.5 out of 10. As for the Green Lantern Batman, who we have seen before, he is going to be a 7 out of 10. And as for, last but not least, my Joker Infected Nightwing, he is going to be a 7.5 out of 10. So, as always, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave the like, leave a comment, smack that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all at Multiverse underscore Corrupt. Do not forget to underscore. The underscore is very important. I feel it separates me from the rest. Don't you think so? So, with all that said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Uh -huh.